I'll tell you a story that happened with me and Abba. I'll tell you some insider scoop. Seven points into traditional factors. Mm. Eight points into using the proper pronouns, mm -hmm. right? She want to be able to make a builder bear husband. Go in the yeah. open bag. Shouldn't you make a build a bear life? At least that's what I want to promote on this channel. I want to say make a build a bear life. Have a build a bear like existence. Have a build a bear existing. Have a build a bear marriage. What's the point of fighting for freedom and paying your tax if you're not going to enjoy your life? Why not have a build a bear life? You know, I'm always shocked at how many times like I come across somebody who's like, Brittany, you can't just do anything you want. I'm like, can't I though? Can't I? Within reason. Can I not? Can I not? Can I not? Like, I'm sorry that y'all are restricted by the pain of your bubble. And I get it. Me too. Sometimes we got to fight governments. Sometimes, you know, you got to deal with immigration. I feel you. But like, is life not a Sims game? Is life not a pick your own adventure? As you guys know, big fan of Abba and Preach. I like Abba a lot. Him and I are friends. And so even if we disagree today, remember, I'm disagreeing with love. If we disagree. I don't know yet. I don't know. Do you want to know one of the saddest realizations I recently had was that as a liberal woman, it is really hard to find a man who is willing to play the more traditional masculine role in the relationship in today's day and age, who is not a conservative, a man who wants to pay on the first date, who wants to. I'm already disagreeing and I'm so excited for this. It's so hard to find a conservative man that is not conservative. That doesn't make any sense to me since most men I know, liberal or conservative, bought dinner for women and held open doors for women. And until younger Gen Z slash younger millennials came in, all men, no matter if they were Democrats or Republicans growing up, paid for dinner. When did liberal men stop specifically paying for dinner? When did that become a conservative thing to do? It shifted culture. This is new. This is an absolute shift in culture. This is not traditional, at least in the bubble. I grew up in Orange County, which is a Republican county, which is a conservative county, okay? Even if you dated liberal men in Orange County or around Orange County or in Irvine or in Anaheim or in Temecula or Winchester or San Diego or any of those places, they still picked up the women for their dates. They still bought them dinner. So when did the cultural shift actually happen? Because in my bubble, that it was always traditional for a man, because it was gender-based, not political-based, to buy him dinner or buy her dinner. So what, when did it shift? You don't think there's a difference between traditional and conservative? Yes, I understand that. But oh. You being liberal and stuff like that <laughs> is not traditional. That's not traditional. And most people that are conservative tend to be more traditional. I know there's a difference. I absolutely know there's a difference. But they are very close. Very close. Almost similar. What you're asking for is something that is not traditional. So you're surprised that people that are conservative and tend more to traditional things, that's what you want, but you don't want the frame of mind to get them to be traditional. You actually want to go, you don't want a man. You want to go take a trip in the Okanagan Valley and pick cherries. That's what you want to do. You want to pick cherries. Go there, pick cherries for a summer, make your money, and come back. Hmm? That's what it is. I'm not mad at her. I mean... I am not either. She wants to choose her boyfriend the same way I choose an RPG character. She want to be like three points into charisma. Yeah. Uh, minus five points into conservatism. Yo, but see, for real though, can I be real? I feel like in so many ways, my relationship is like traditional. And then in every way, it is absolutely progressive. I feel like in so many ways, my partner and I are so like conservative, but we're so obviously liberal. I feel like in so many ways, I'm dating a guy who's much more 
um, like reserved and that's one of the reasons why I made him my wife. Like in so many ways, I feel like I'm in a progressive relationship and I feel like I'm in a traditional one. I think it's the vibe. I think it's where we're at. I think it's what we appear as. I think it's how we do things. Obviously, in every way, shape and form, my relationship is very progressive. But, but we're kind of less progressive than like the people that show up on like Jubilee videos or the people who are traditionally blue hair, nose piercings. Like we're not that pro- we're not progressive like that. You know what I mean? So it, it is interesting. Mm. I just think if you're going to have a custom life made for an individual, you should be able to say I want 3% conservative and this a little bit of this and a little bit of this. You know what I'm saying? I kind of feel like if you are making your ideal life, you should be able to do that. I feel like I found that, but I don't know. Uh, Seven points into traditional factors, Mm. eight points into using the proper pronouns, Mm -hmm. right? She want to be able to make a -a Build-A-Bear husband. Go in the open mag- Shouldn't you make a -a Build-A-Bear life? At least that's what I want to promote on this channel. I want to say make a -a Build-A-Bear life. Have a -a Build-A-Bear like existence. Have a -a Build-A-Bear existing. Have a -a Build-A-Bear marriage. What's the point of fighting for freedom and paying your tax if you're not going to enjoy your life? Why not have a -a Build-A-Bear life? What was the point? And that's why when people always say, you know, I'm always shocked at how many times, like, I come across somebody who's like, Brittany, you can't just do anything you want. I'm like, can't I, though? Can't I? Within reason. Can I not? Can I not? Can I not? Like, I'm sorry that y'all are restricted by the pain of your bubble. And I get it. Me too. Sometimes we got to fight governments. Sometimes, you know, you got to deal with immigration. I feel you. But like, is life not a Sims game? Is life not a pick your own adventure? In Valley, pick cherries, my guy. I don't know what that means, but sure. Uh, when you're like, come, you come in a teen, white people, when they come into teens and they're in Quebec, oftentimes they travel to, uh, to British Columbia. To, to pick cherries and Bruh, fruits. Nobody's gonna catch this reference other than you and like some it, It's fine. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Let preach the point is fun. not where you're going and this and that. Mm-hmm. Is you're going out there cherry picking? That's that's the uh, whole gist of it. Okay. It, 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 it doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter. I'm like, why are we going it, to it, Japan to pick cherries? It, I was it, confused. It, that it doesn't matter. Because I didn't ma- even know they had cherries in Japan. Yes. In what? I thought they only had a plum blossoms. In Japan. Okay. Oh. No, okay. <laughs> okay. Now. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Say that shit again, nigga. Say, Okanagan. Okanagan. O- yeah, Okinawa. <laughs> yeah. I'm they to... sound like brothers and cousins. What? <laughs> Don't even come for me. I'm gonna need you to go no, you are not going nowhere. Look, Kara says, what about compromise? Wait, where does compromise come in in this conversation, though? Isn't this just trying to get, like, what you want? I will say I... I feel like compromise happens outside of values, though, right? You never compromise on values. You always compromise on, like, who does the dishes. Like, so I want to know your opinion more on how do you bring compromising into this. Um, Isako? Isako? How how am I going to say your name? The line of thinking I don't get. In my family, we're more left than the normal peeps, but it's not like I don't have some values that may be considered right wingy. Of course, like that's the like the truth is, is that if you're a more nuanced, complex person, you're going to hold values and different ideas from all over the world because everyone everywhere has something to teach us about something. Like I truly think the world, there's values and good things and just ideas and concepts that are good, you know, all over the world. And so to say that I would, I need, that's why I. I love the world because they want to be in a box. They say they don't want to be in a box or a bubble or a culture that restricts them. But yet they feel comforted being restricted. It's the iPhone problem all over again. You get five options for iPhone colors because anything else and you're overwhelmed. And that's how I feel people are in life. I want all the options because the reality is because of my personality and who I am and my lived experience and the limitations I have as a consciousness, that I'm always going to end up having my own limitations anyways. So I really don't have endless, but I have a lot more than the average person because I don't want to be in a box. I literally just have more options. So this girl saying like, where are the liberal men with the traditional values? Yeah, you can get one of those. You can get one of those. They exist. They're 100% a category of dateable men, but you have to know where to find them. And then you have to know you can get them. And you have to accept that some people won't think they exist. And that's the funny thing. 
is like people are unconvinced that there are people in the world that are a little bit more complex than them. But they exist. <laughs> they thought it was Asian too. Okanagan. This is uh, to no. be fair. <laughs> Listen, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a native. It's a, it's a native <laughs> name. No, no, bro. And, and if you think about it, natives are just like forest Asians. So it's the same thing. Uh, no, Asians are forced native. Anyways, <sighs> let's keep going. And obviously, as a liberal woman, I do want to be respected for my independence. And I do want to have my own autonomy in the relationship and not be confined or conform to the traditional female homemaker, childbearing role. And most of the men that I've dated who do have that more natural provider masculinity role. And most of the whole female and not be confined. Sorry. Native. Anyways, oh, let's keep sorry, going. Sorry, sorry. I lost her because I was reading your chat. Liberal woman, I do want to be respected for my independence. And I do want to have my own autonomy in the relationship and not be confined or conform to the traditional female homemaker childbearing role. And most of the men that I've dated who do have that more natural provider masculinity about them are normally conservative. So I don't really know what to do because I don't want to compromise my morals and values just to find a man. But am I asking to have my cake and eat it too? Yeah. I got to uh, No, no, no. My liberal homies, my girlfriends, they date liberal men like this and they fall into this category. So they're they're um Democrats first and foremost. Democrats. Very specific. They are kind of like independent women and they don't need you to hold open the door, but they're also like fans of like 1940s, 1950s Casablanca films. So they're into the romances, they're into the Cary Grants and they're into Audrey Hepburn and they're into like really romanticized, like very specific relationship dynamics all the way through like, let's say 60s vintage. They're very into the man is the man and the woman is the woman, but at the same time they are independent and have jobs. So. There are these liberal men who can fit these sort of traditional, think about it, like I said, like think about it like Audrey Hepburn, super independent Audrey Hepburn, but her films involve these men, except Breakfast at Tiffany's, <laughs> but they, they, they have these men that are very like manly and sort of traditional, like not men that I would date, right? And so it's one of those things where the, this is a real category of dateable people. They're just not in our bubbles. Like, they're not in my bubble. But my homies, they date guys like this. They are girls like this. Um, some of them are successful. Some of them aren't because, you know, you never know when you're going to meet that person who's truly compatible with you. But that is a category of date. Like, that is a category of people that people date. I see it in the nanny families. I actually nannied for a lot of the families in Seattle. The men had the traditional-ish roles, but the women worked too. And they were independent and they were liberal and they were sort of progressive. But they were sort of like conservative, like Democrat progressive, like Democrats. You know what I mean? Same thing. Totally a thing. Honestly, can I be real with you? It's kind of found more in upper middle class categories of people. Like I'm going to say it. It might be a classism issue and an area issue. Um, it's kind of like a very specific, there's this very specific kind of bubble that harbors this kind of dynamic. You know what I mean? And so it might just not be found in like online spaces really, because these people, well, I don't think they would necessarily be online if I'm going to be honest with you in the same way the rest of us are. Um, none of my girlfriends that fall into this category are on the internet and none of the guys they date are on the internet. So Maybe it's just a bubbles thing at the end of the day. You know what I mean? CJ says, could progressives and conservatives be together? What values would they share? Freedom. Both both conservatives and progressives believe in freedom and believe the government shouldn't tell them what to do. They just disagree on the method to make that happen. So they couldn't actually probably be that compatible. But if they really came together and accepted that they had different methods for how they made that happen, that could work. You know what I mean? Um, Who's Audrey? Y'all don't know who Audrey Hepburn is? <laughs> Sly said, if a phrase was, I don't want to go against my morals and values is followed by, but I honestly feel like the person needs to go back to the drawing board and recess how this, how they see the relationship for sure. Yes. Do you want to know? Yes, what yes, yes. Yes, you are. As we all know, no, I don't want to compromise. See, you said it right there. I do not want to compromise. <clears throat> you set this standard that is kind of contradicting, but whatever. All right. And then those men probably exist, but yeah, so does unicorns. You understand what I'm saying? It's like. Do you want to know one of the. Hold on, I just want to play the end again. I didn't hear what she said. 
Am I, am I, do, am I having my cake and eating it too? Do because I don't want to compromise my morals and values just to find a man. But am I asking to have my cake and eat it too? Yes. I'm asking how my cake and eat it too. I have my cake and eat it too. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, I, I, I heard what you heard. Yeah, okay. But okay, in the context, matter, matter, I know what yeah. you meant. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I just think it's interesting mm. that as you become more progressive, you don't want to compromise your morals and values, but you expect people to compromise. More traditional men to do this, do that. So again, when you talk about morals and values, what does that have to do with like opening up a door or paying for dinner? Right. Like, what is moral about opening up a door or paying for dinner? what is moral like what does ethics have to do with that what is that why is that even a value isn't that just a preference are we confusing preferences with things that are values like values usually have to do with honesty and transparency and consistency or something like that but preferences like who op like do you want to open the door for me is like saying like i have a preference of what pos sex position i'm in like why are we moralizing sex positions or moralizing who opens a door like these, this isn't a compromise on values. This is a preference and attitude. And plenty of liberal Democrat men who are open to progressive ideals are happy to open doors, but they are, exist in certain bubbles and they want specific kinds of women. So I kind of feel like that's confusing to me a little bit. What do you guys think? Isn't that a little confusing? Like, why are we saying, didn't she say she wants someone to open doors and pay for dinner? Like, what does that have to do with values? I don't know. To me, it's just uh, <clears throat> endemic of the fact that I think people want to not be non-traditional and still expect traditional from other people she's saying she wants to be independent and do her thing and have her career but also have a man take care of her and it's just it's funny to me how women can evolve as much as they want but they want men to also evolve but also stay the same they want men to evolve in the i Maybe in certain ways, it might be harder to find this particular combination, but I really feel like in the right bubbles, they're not that uncommon, but they're definitely, like I said, they're not in my bubbles. Hmm. The way they want, <laughs> which and, and it's fine and it's fine and it's, it's totally fine. It's okay. Again, nah, not all women, we know that. But that particular woman and the type of woman like that want to evolve however way they want. But men are not going to evolve however way they want. No. They're going to evolve according to my standards. And I'm going to have to find... Yeah, okay. And that's fine to have standards. I am I am rooting for you. Uh, whoop, whoop. Live your life. Uh, force à toi. But you're going to be less likely to find that. It's very contradicting. Uh, but it's fine. I mean, hope, more more life. You see how difficult it is? Yeah, I can understand how difficult it is. Yeah. It's like you yeah, want to be the president of your country and also be treated like a princess. It's just funny. Mm. It's just funny. Yeah, I think you can be all the things. I don't think you have to be one-dimensional in life. I think you can be multifaceted and nuanced and be a president and a princess. I just think you put on different hats at different times of the day. I think your husband can be the breadwinner and go out there and make money and bring home the Bugatti. And I think at night he can cry in your arms and be the princess. I think you can be this homemaker wife who during the day take care, takes care of the babies and at night, you know, does her side hustle. I think you can be so many things at once. And I think limiting yourself is the problem. I think people are settling in relationships. I think they're settling for their lives. I think they're settling for basic because they don't know they can do more. Basic is not bad. It's not bad to settle. But I do think people are settling. It's not compromise. Compromise is who does the dishes. Settling is saying, man, I really wish my husband would open the door for me, but I guess at least he goes to work. It's like, yeah, I guess. But, you know, opening the door for your wife is not that hard either. And it's not really a sacrifice. Right. So for me, it's like, do I have a partner that wants to make my day better? And do I want to make their day better? And then do I want to stick to the rules of whatever I've been forced to adhere by? Right. So, again, I don't really like the idea of settling for the lifestyle I want. Right. When you can do so much in life. If you're with somebody who's holding you back, if you're with somebody who won't get there with you, 
Isn't that just like settling? Why are you settling? Like, I guess I just don't understand what they're saying. You know what I mean? A princess president is someone I literally wanted to be when I was a kid. Yes, let's go. I don't know. Maybe I'm not understanding. Like, yeah, I don't know. My partner and I talk on a daily basis about like, what do we want? What's the lifestyle? Like I just did a vlog about, are we gonna be homeowners or lifelong renters? Like what's our goal? What's our realistic goal for finances? What do we think we want? What do we What are we looking at? You know what I mean? What's What's within reason for our, our capabilities, our personalities, who we are? It's a, it's a constant conversation, right? I don't know. Will the Greatest says, I think Abba and Preach are implying her desires are contradictory. I think it, maybe I missed it. Did she say that she wouldn't pay for bills or something? Because I think I've seen those girls who they won't contribute to the household. They'll say like, oh, I make the money and you make the money, but my money is my money and your money's like that our money. Those girls are crazy. But did she say that? Or didn't she just say she wants a guy who's a progressive or a liberal, but also opens the door and buys me dinner and like is the man, right? Or did I miss something? Did I misunderstand? Maybe I misunderstood something. Hold on. We're at six minutes and 13 seconds. Did I misunderstand something? Hold on. Was that as a liberal woman, it is really hard to find a man who is willing to play the more traditional masculine role in the relationship in today's day and age? Who is not a conservative? A man who wants to pay on the first date, who wants to open literally pay on the first date and open the door. Pay on the first date and open the door are so within reason from a progressive man or a progressive woman. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't know what she's asking that that is that outrageous, right? She's not asking him to buy the house. She's not asking him to buy the Bugatti. She's saying, can you just like open my door and buy me dinner on the first date specifically? Now look, okay. I buy the dinner on my first dates for all my partners, boys, girls. Oh, except for my first girlfriend. She was the breadwinner. But yeah, I just don't, I feel like she just wants like uh, Audrey Hepburn, like Cary Grant. She just wants like a romantic, a boy who's going to romance her. I feel like that's so within reason, right? I think Abbott thinks she is that my money type. Maybe he does, but she's not coming off like that because you know what I mean? But I have seen girls like that who are like, like I said, they're like, my money's my money and your money's our money. That's crazy. But she just seems like a girl who fits into a stereotype of a lot of my girlfriends I know. A lot of them are white. A lot of them come from middle class or upper middle class families. And they want a guy who's a Democrat or a progressive, who's pro like LGBT and pro socialized medicine and healthcare and all that stuff, but still buys, you know, them dinner or flowers or takes them out on vacations. But they're also willing to help pay. They're also willing to go have these. They're also willing to, you know, they don't want to be freeloaders. So again, like romanticism, being romantic, like this is, what are we talking about here? Like what, what conversation are we really having? I just think because again, I'm blessed. I am blessed that I've been bubble hopping for so long and that I just know different people exist. I know these people. I know exactly, man, I should start a dating service. That's what I should do because I know exactly what kind of, kind of guy she's looking for. I bet I could find this guy for her. I would just need the right tools. But I, I feel like I know exactly who she's supposed to be dating. Okay, this was requested because we love Eartha Kitt. Eartha Kitt, you're going to know exactly who she is if you don't remember right now because you know her voice. She's amazing. Let's give her a listen on compromise. Anyone live with Eartha Kitt? That's not for me to decide. Not for someone who decides to live with me to decide. Not for me. But are you willing to compromise? within a relationship to compromise what is compromising compromising for what compromising for what reason to compromise for what to compromise what is compromise if a man came into your life wouldn't you want to compromise <laughs> stupid <laughs> A man comes into my life and I have to compromise? You must think about that one again. <laughs> A man comes into my life and you have to compromise? For what? For what? For what? A relationship is a relationship that has to be earned, not to compromise for. And I love relationships. I think they're fantastic. They're wonderful. I think they're great. I think there's nothing in the world more beautiful than 
falling in love. But falling in love for the right reason, falling in love for the right purpose, falling in love. Falling in love. When you fall in love, what is there to compromise about? Isn't love a union between two people? Or does Eartha fall in love with herself? I think if you were to think about it in terms of analyzing, yes. I fall in love with myself, and I want someone to share it with me. I want someone to share me with me. Has that happened? Bye, Waylon! Bye! Many, many times, in many ways. Annie says you will often find this kind of man in educated bubbles. My partner and I are both educated. Once I got my PhD, I will outlearn my partner, but he still prefers to be the chivalrous, chival, chival, oh my gosh, chival, chival, chivalry, chivalrous, and gentlemanly. <clears throat> so yes, so the women I know and the men I know who are this category are all educated. They at least have a college bachelor's. So the friends I have, the girlfriends I have that want a man like this who's liberal, progressive, and a gentleman – they are higher educated. That's what I'm saying. They're upper middle class. Like you're not going to find this in the average. You're not going to find a lot of nuance in the basic. I'm not saying being educated makes you less basic, but it usually pops bubbles. It usually forces you into a different arena. It usually gives you an option you didn't know you had before. And people who get an education in America tend to be more uh, liberal. They just do, even if they're conservative. Like I said, so many of the nanny families I worked for, they weren't like blue haired, blue haired, like nose piercing families, but they were progressive, you know, politically. But, you know, in their everyday life, it was more traditional. And the men did do those things and the women worked as well. And they were high earning families. But there is something to be said about not knowing that because you're not exposed to that because you are only on the Internet or no offense. You're only in circles of the world that are like averagey or below average. You know what I mean? You're dealing with people who don't have these options. You might not have the option to be all the things you don't even realize you could be. You know what I mean? Um, I love Eartha Kit. Thank you for recommending that video. Let's finish their video, though. Let's see if they say something different because it still has a, quite a few uh, – it has a long way to go. Yeah. It's like you want to be the president of your country and also be treated like a princess. Mm -hmm. It's just funny. It's just funny. It's like – that's a volume. girl boss by no, day. No, 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 by night. no, no, no. Yeah, girl boss by day, princess by night. That's how my partner and I do it. You know what I mean? He's a princess by day and a I don't know, so like whatever. I mean, we're whatever we need to be. Like we're just whatever we need to be. We're both princesses and we're both not princesses. We're both like in charge, but we're not both in charge. Like when shit hits the fan. I don't know, just like whoever has more spoons does it. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't, we can be all the things. God, we're so lucky. No, we're not. We're not lucky. We earned this. We worked hard on this. We we challenged our bubbles. We ch challenged shame. We looked our bubble in the eye and said, I know the rules of your life. I'm not going to do this. We had to face our friends. We had to face peer pressure. We had to look at everyone around us and say, you know what? Love that for you. We're not going to do it. So honestly, no, like I I feel like relationships are earned and your place in them are earned. Your right to be nuanced is earned. Your place to have a life you exactly want is earned by patience and humility and all these things. Like, no, you can be anything you want to be, right? Just like I was told as a youngin', okay? So, mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. No, 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 no. That, I, that no. But that's what they want. The first one. That's what you want to be the president and the president? That was fire. She want to be the president? Yeah. That's what she was. The f yeah, that's, that's what she it. was. That's what I am in my relationship. 
that's what I feel like my partner is in, in their relationship. Like, I don't get it. I, I feel like I have that. <laughs> I, I feel like we have that in many ways. Like, you can have both things. They're not diff they're not like they're they feel contradictory and like look life is all tiny contradictions but i don't know y'all i it it works it can work that shit she want to be the p and the p yeah you she want to be the p and the p but yeah that could be that could, that could be a thing you mm -hmm. want to be the p and the p she want to be the p and the p <laughs> but uh i don't know i just watched this and i laughed yeah i, I chuckled <laughs> Mm -hmm. I just wonder when people record these kind of videos, they just don't hear themselves. Like nope. you have to go to the process of adding. Something. Man, I really got to be a dating coach. I'm telling you, I, that's my next venture. I got to be a dating coach. I'm telling you, everyone doubted me. Everyone told me I'm not going to find the partner that's perfect. And I said, I, I'm with that. I don't have time for your like down Debbie Downer ass. Like everyone told me you can't have everything you want. And I said, can't I? Can't I? Can't I? Can I have a boy and a girl? Can I have uh, everything I want? Can I have everything I need? Yes, I can. I can have everything I want. Mm-hmm. And it's fine if I, got, if I never got any of it with a partner. Because I still would have had the life I want as a single person, like Eartha. Like, I still would have done the Eartha kit thing and chilled. But, like, you know what I mean? Now, compromise, I use, again, in relation to, like, who does the dishes. That's a compromise. But, like, I'm not shifting my values. I'm not compromising on my life. I'm not compromising on the quality of my life either. If my partner is the reason my quality of life has gone down and they're not going to fix it, oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Which is why, again, him and I check in every day. What is the lifestyle I want? What are we looking for? What do we want to do when we're two old girls and we're, like, retiring? What is our life going to look like? You know what I mean? Jasmine says, people that settle don't understand. Yeah, I just don't think they do. I don't think they could even fathom the idea that you don't have to settle. When the whole world has told you, settle, 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 settle. Subtitles <laughs> doing all the editing to upload it. And you didn't stop and think, wait, don't I already have the answer? If you want... It's like you're expecting from him something you're not willing to do yourself. You want him to compromise, you, but you don't want to compromise. That's it. I don't know. Oh, my God. How did I meet myself? How did I meet my... <gasps> Boomer Brittany has... A... I haven't done that in so long. I haven't done that in so long. There is a bubble. Okay, now that you can hear me. There is a bubble in which the man works and is the primary head of household. Right? Okay. But the woman is still obligated to make an income, be a representative, be a hustler, but still be also the housewife. Like there is a bubble, right, where both people in the relationship have to do so much. They have to do so much. Like I don't know how to explain it to you. Um, uh, who comes to mind? Okay, this is going to sound really weird, but like a Ryan Reynolds, Blake Lively come to mind. You know how Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively, like he's the man and she's the woman. And we hear more about Ryan Reynolds. This is such a weird example. We hear a lot about Ryan Reynolds and how he's doing things. But do you know Blake is also doing things? She's just not the focus. But she is too, like a part of a couple that is progressive and liberal. But I'm going to assume Ryan Reynolds holds open the door for her. You get what I'm saying? Is that a good example? Like that seems to be a couple a lot of people like. Like it's he's still going to be a gentleman. He's still going to be doing traditional things. Right? But she also is going to be doing like feministy things. Do you guys, does that make sense? Does this couple make sense as the example? Right? Tired mom says my husband is progressive and traditional. I guess I got lucky. I'm just saying it's possible. I know so many progressive men who are traditional. And again, like progressive Democrat liberal men. I'm going to say all three categories because it's specific. Now, they can be older as well. We're talking older millennials, Gen X. So that's very different, right, than the younger 23-year-olds who are going to have a harder time finding that model. And also, if you're dating online, all the couples I'm thinking of, none of them are online. They're just not online. They're not thinking about YouTube as much. Like, they like it, but, you know, they're really working. They're doing things in the world. So I, I don't know. Maybe that's just – maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's just – the fact that I go through so many bubbles, I just feel like 
I'm used to this. Let me tell you. And then you find it difficult because you don't want to compromise? Mm. Sounds dumb to me and counterproductive. But that you do you. Fuck that to why. Yo, I but want a girl who so so dick like what a porn star and is still a virgin. It's like, okay. okay. Come on now, B. I mean, we could all wish, I guess. Where does she learn? The streets. You know, like, everything is going to have a trade-off. Everything's going to have a compromise. Nobody finding the perfect partner. So you got to... Speak for yourself. Speak for your self. What is a perfect partner? By Brittany's definition, a person who does not force you to compromise on your values. A perfect partner is a person who allows you to be yourself 100%, allow you to live within your values 100%, and helps facilitate your joy and the continued happiness of and health of the relationship. What is a perfect partner? Because I found mine. When you all say, I don't, you know, you're not going to find a perfect partner, what are you thinking? What are you, what is in your head? What are you imagining? My perfect partner is open-minded, interesting, compassionate, thoughtful, you know, introspective, extrospective. You know what I mean? They're, they're everything, right? That I needed in a human. So therefore they're perfect. What? Are other people imagining when they're saying you're not going to find someone who's perfect? What does that mean? I got to talk to Abba about this. I don't know what that means. You know? She never said she wanted someone to compromise. Well, that's the thing, right? I don't think she wanted someone to compromise. I don't even think she wanted to compromise. I think she wanted to find somebody that could do it all. Or at least in her eyes, do more than just the basics. Maddox says, due to my country, if I were... To conflate political inclination with the traditional characteristic, I would have to date a fascist or a monarch, monarchist, monarch, oh, monarchist, monarch, marn, oh my God, I haven't, I haven't seen that. Oh my God, my dyslexia. Monarchist. Um, honestly, how far back does traditional even go? That's a great question. That's a great question. You know. Find out where you're going to give. You're going to have to find out where you got to give. But this kind of talk is just weird. <sighs> Uh, Claire Bell says, I don't even, th I don't think people, wait, I think, oh my God, I think people don't even know what a perfect partner is for them. The D, the answer, def <sighs> the default answer is smart, funny, and caring. Yes. Um, wait, oh, what, was this a conversation on my VC? No, it was during Kyla's event. Kyla, not so erudite, and I did this event between our two discords. And this really nice person was describing like their ideal partner. And I joked with them. I was like, hey, you know, like um, that also like a serial killer could like a, like qualify for what you just described, like a murderer. Like you at the end of the day, like when we say like smart, caring and funny and kind, like a lot of people could fall under that category. It doesn't really help narrow it down or smart, funny and caring. like. I think Hitler cared for his dog and his wife, right? <laughs> like, don't, like, you should have stricter requirements of your future partner based off your values and their vibe, right? Of, of the, who they are exactly before committing to that lifelong relationship. You know what I mean? It can't just be um, generic concepts, right? Wait, I think she meant masochist. I thought she meant masochist. Oh my God, not gonna lie. Stop. I swear I never knew my dyslexia was so bad until I got a little older and I started reading YouTube comments and slash had a problem with directionality. Like I learned that a part of um, not dyslexia, but the sister connector of dyslexia or like maybe dyslexia too. Like I have problem with directionality. So like, you know, it takes me a second to go right or left or it, you know what I mean? But you just manage. And so you don't think about it too much. But like, oh, my gosh, certain jobs bring it out. Like when I do YouTube, I'm just so aware of how bad I am at reading. Uh, most people don't know what they want. That's true. I don't. They don't know what they need. They don't know what's healthy for them. And I just hate to see people limit themselves because that's what what they're used to. That's what they think. That's the only thing they think they can have. It's yeah, weird. and it made me think of like all the ladies who were just like the most progressive people I knew, but then expected men to like still pay on the first dates and still do all this like traditional mask and stuff. And I don't mind. I don't think there's anything wrong with those things. But the expectation of it is what I think is funny. As we're changing and society's changing, it's just interesting that like there's constant demands of men to change, but like, you know what? You know that portion where you as a man just take charge of situations and do all this other stuff that's like born from the patriarchy, but we think is good. We want you to keep that. It's like, okay. Okay. It's just... 
But we want to know from you guys. What do you guys think? Is this ridiculous? Because I think patriarchy is so ass- associated with ego, I do have a hard time with the concept, right? I think everything is ego at the end of the day, right? Humans are all ego driven. So there's this like issue with like every time someone tells me, like my partner and I talk about this all the time. Like if somebody came and broke in the door, like who's going to go in to check? The police. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, or whoever has a better weapon. Like why would it matter if he went or if I went? Like what would the literal difference be? You know what I mean? Like with some couples, there is a huge difference between the male partner and the female partner. But I'm sorry, between like some of us, like the gender of our partner just matters so little. Like I couldn't even imagine it really mattering. I've never dated someone where I thought like, oh, the man should definitely go check. Like they're not tougher than me. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't date guys who look like preach. You know, I don't date guys who are even as tall as Abba. Like I don't date guys who are sitting here six feet tall and like, well, that's not true. I did date a guy who was like 6'4", but he was a pussy from Seattle. It's not the same. It's like, who's going to go? What? We're, we're None of us have guns. Like, what are you talking about? Like, we're not fighters. Like, we're going to go if we can. But like the police, we're going to lock ourselves in a room and call the cops. Like, what are you talking about? Like, wh- 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 otherwise me, I guess. Like, okay, it's just whoever feels most confident in the situation. You know what I mean? Like, whoever's most comfortable in the situation. When my sister-in-law are in a room together, I'm more of a man. So I do the man stuff, okay? It's not that deep. When I was with my little brother one time, when he was much younger than he is now, obviously, way younger, like, I, he defaulted to me. Like, what do we do, Brittany? What do we do? Because gender doesn't matter. It didn't matter that he was, a, you know, like, basically a legal adult. It's who who's the most capable in the situation? You know what I mean? Like, what is this? So, again, I just feel like you should have the most capable, efficient relationship possible and not worry about whatever gender is doing whatever. Now, I think with straight girls, it's harder because straight girls want a very specific romantic man, but they want to be able to contribute to the household. But again, I think those categories of people really do exist. They're not that hard to find. They're just, they have a, a barrier to entry. You might not qualify for the category of people that are progressive liberal, gentlemen, men, who kind of adhere to those roles of like paying for dinner and still want a woman who's like career driven, but they absolutely do exist. You might just not qualify for those bubbles. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Mr. Maid says perfect partner sometimes means hitting everything physically, financially, mentally, morally, sometimes spiritually and emotionally desired. doesn't often happen in a person goes out looking for it all. Um, Yeah, so, like, I feel like I found that. But I also know what I found was rare because I, though I think there's millions of people who qualify on the planet, you do have to find them still, and that's the hard part. Not that they don't exist. It's just, where do I find them? It's not that they don't exist. It's where are they located? I see, I see is the problem, right? Like, where are they located? Is it acceptable? She being insane right now? Obviously, she deleted this video, private or... Her account once this went viral because people were mocking her. When? I and look, I, I, I don't think it's one of those things where people gotta send hate mail to people. Like whatever, people got a dumb take or whatever. It's fine. Um, but yeah, that's what happened. What did you gonna say? Internet when you put stuff like that, when you have a lack of self awareness like that, and you just post it like that, and like, mm, why do you think people will tell you what you think? True. This is why the internet is single and grumpy. Because this girl is not asking for too much. The internet is just so pathetically alone and lonely that they think that everyone has to be bitter like they are. This woman is not asking for too much. I'm sorry. She's literally asking for something that people find all the time. You just got to be in the right bubble. They will tell you what they think. And they'll be like, yo, you, you bugging. Okay? You post yourself like that. I was just thinking. I just came there. And you don't have self-awareness. People will... We'll make you aware of things. But let's 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 take it from her perspective. I think women probably feel at their best in relationship dynamics when they have a man who takes care of them. Not like a, buys everything or whatever, but generally makes them feel safe, protected. Uh, you know, goes out of their way to be a gentleman or whatever. So even though these are things that are emblematic of like the patriarch and the way things used to be, right? That is, I think, I suspect what women. I could be wrong. It's been what I've seen the most. Okay. I think in certain situations, there's like a default. 
I'll tell you a story that happened with me and Abba. I'll tell you some insider scoop. Um, Abba and I, uh, we chilled in Miami together, right? For a work thing with Destiny and everybody. Went great. It was a great weekend. I had a lot of fun. Um, had a really, it was a really great group of people. We just, we had a great time, okay? We had to grab an Uber, okay? And the Uber driver fucking scared the shit out of me, bros. This Uber driver, it was major traffic on the highway in Miami. And the Uber driver went into the red cone area where the cops and the construction guys were deterring us. And I was in the backseat with ABBA. And I was like, what is he doing? And I was like, oh, my God. And I was like freaking out because I was like, oh, my God, are we going to get in a car accident in fucking Miami? And I was already on edge. And I was like, oh, my God, my anxiety was shooting through the roof. And I like grabbed ABBA. And I was like, oh, my God. And I was like, <laughs> And I like grabbed him and it was very much like a dynamic where I'm sure in his head he was like, oh, like, OK, uh, like the girl is looking for me to like do something. But I was just like not in a headspace because my anxiety was so insane to like talk to this Uber driver or to like be calm about the situation. But normally in other situations where my anxiety is not up. Yeah, like I've got it. I'm chill. I'm like the one giving people comfort. But in that state of mind, I was freaking out. So I was like, oh, my God. And I like grabbed Abba and I was like, oh, my God. Like, do something as if Abba's going to be able to do something. It was just he was the calm person in the car. It wasn't that he was the man, but I'm sure the, like, it could have been interpreted that way. It was just that he was the calm person in the car, and I was not the calm person in the car. And I just happened to be a woman, and he happens to be a man. And I leaned on him, like, emotionally for that support of, like, are we about to die? And he's like, we're not going to die. Everything's going to be fine. And I was like, okay. Because, like, this Uber driver is literally getting – he's, like, driving into the Red Cone area where they're doing construction. What if we fall off the freeway? And then finally the cops or construction guys, like, yelled at our Uber driver. And he's, they're like, get back on the road. Like, they literally yelled at him. So he knew he was doing something wrong, but he was so aggressive. And he was, like – he was giving me so much anxiety about the way he was driving. I was just like, oh, he does not drive like a, a cool Uber driver. He was driving, like, very, you know – so yeah, major, major points to Abba for being a good, solid man in that moment. But really what he was being was like a really solid person. He was giving me calm and collected. He was offering me a place to be anxious. He was allowing me to be like physically anxious as well as like emotionally, like probably suffocating him with my anxiety and my fear. And in that moment, it was really, really helpful. But I've also been in situations where men needed me to do the same thing. You know what I mean? TMM says, Brittany, you have bad luck with Uber drivers. TMM and I, one time, were stuck in an Uber driver. <laughs> we're in an Uber with, like, the worst person in the world. Bro, that story is insane. Oh, TMM, that was the craziest. That's still the craziest Uber driver story I have is the one with you. That was still the craziest Uber driver. That story is not fucking crazy, bro. Anyways, so major props to ABBA for being like just a solid energy, but I can see how in situations like that, it could help reinforce men to think like, this is what women really want, which yeah, for my sister-in-law, oh my gosh, she loves that my brother's big and strong. She's like, oh, I just melt in his arms and he's so protective. And if anything goes bad, but if my brother's not home, all of a sudden my sister-in-law is like, Ch -ch -ch, I got this. That's the funny part is like, if he's not there then she's more than capable. Have you guys seen those TikToks where it'll show women where it's like when my husband's home, can you open up this jar? Oh, can you lift this? When when the husband's not home, the wife is just sitting there doing it all herself. Sometimes even women perform and infantilize themselves as inadequate in order to fuel or fill that dynamic. And men also do the same. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Ooh, Jessica says all genders love being taken care of. I think that that's it. That's the answer. Yeah. Jessica said it. We all like being taken care of. Some of us are just more open with it than others. You know what I mean? And some of us, I think like the fresh and fit bubble, they are too obsessed with being like um, providers without being um, fully formed providers. You know what I mean? Like your your money is just so useless in a world where right now what we need is a lot of emotional support. So you know what I mean? Yeah, even men love to be held by their partners. Totally true. Totally true. Mr. May said, I know it's kind of old, but I owe you somewhat of an apology for the whole Jonah Hill criticism. What? After reading the whole context, I feel like he actually was manipulative in a few ways. Just wanted to say, I appreciate that. I appreciate that so much. Oh, gosh. That's so sweet, actually. Thank you. I mean, I, you know, I honestly didn't even, I wouldn't have thought about it twice because everyone's got an opinion, but I appreciate that. 
Um, Abba Giga Chad gentleman. Yes, he doesn't want to uh just wait, he just doesn't want to spend his money. Abba's so actually Abba's frugality is so attractive. <laughs> A man who saves his money is attractive. I'm not going to play. Like, I'm not going to play with you. There's something so attractive about somebody who's, like, Graham Stephan's so attractive because he's frugal to me. I'm like, what's up, Graham? Like, I thought my partner was so much more attractive because he had, like, a really nice savings when we met. And I was like, okay. Like, there's something about that that's really nice, you know? And he says their arguments do not really resonate with me because we shouldn't we all uh, be striving to make the good parts uh, – to take the good parts of different systems and then evolve. Not everything should have to fit into one box or another. Well, yes. But no. Yes, if you're a person like me, if you're a person like you. But lots of people don't want to do that actually. They they genuinely want to be given the script and stick to the script and they don't want to look at what anyone else has as a suggestion. That's why people do get so strongly set in their bubbles, which is fine, but it does limit them. It's why when I'm on a date with somebody, there's always these questions I ask to see where they're at, how open-minded. When I say my partner and I are open-minded, we mean that we know what our values are and everything, but we're very open-minded to like shifting, change, whatever. You know what I mean? There's something to be said about how comfortable people are not opening their mind to other people's way of being. Yeah, yeah, says we all need to be the little spoon sometimes. Even Abba likes it too. Who doesn't love to be the little spoon? Who doesn't? Um, Jasmine says frugal is attractive. Cheap is not. Agreed. Agreed. Very different. Very different, let me tell you. Very different. I was, I put this in the vlog yesterday, today, I don't remember. But my partner and I just went over a month of saved receipts because, you know, now we're living together. Now we're not, you know, two single people with our own jobs, our own apartments. We're two people living together, sharing income. So we went over our receipts. We went over our grocery spending and we're actually pretty happy with the outcome. We wanted to spend how we normally would like naturally spend. And it's well within budget. It's so nice. It was a huge relief too because we were sitting here thinking we were overspending, but nope, just perfectly within budget. Just like, I'm so excited about that. Um, Claire Bell says vlog. Yes, I've been doing vlogs, uh, behind the scenes vlogs. So like, you know, just thoughts behind the scenes. Maybe I talk about a video before I post it or I, I mull over ideas with you guys or I show myself at the beach yesterday like I did or I do cooking stuff um, or I cut my hair on my vlog. I, I cut my own hair the other day. I did it for the vlog. It was great. I needed a haircut and it was like such a good space to do it. If you guys become um, members on um, YouTube, it's the Open With Boundaries number two members, Open With Boundaries. If you become that member uh, level, you'll get vlogs and you'll get the live shows after I private them because I private the or I member only the live shows after the live show. Um, it helps fund the channel and I really want to make this my lifelong career. So I got to be more business minded and that seems to be what typical YouTubers have been doing. So yep, following suit. Been loving the vlogs. I'm so excited. Thank you so much. Um, Tired mom. Oh my God. I love that username. On the same page. So happy for you. Yes. Like being on the same page. So good. Okay. Let's, let's finish out the video. Maybe they say something different and I haven't heard it yet. Okay. Uh, oh my God. Thank you, Lakara. I'm so glad you guys are enjoying the vlogs. Thank you. Uh, they still love that. Yeah. So even though they're fed a lot of this progressive narrative yeah. of like, do this, you're a girl independent, you don't need no man. I think when the confines of a relationship happens, they realize they like that overly masculine yeah. man who's just like, girl, you ain't got to work. I got this all or whatever. Right? Yeah. Um, so I guess it's got to be conflicting to some degree. It's like you have this really good feeling of like primally. I'm just theorizing. I'm trying to understand the mindset. Like from a primal standpoint, she probably just feels like, ooh, this is the kind of relationship that makes me feel good. But politically, it doesn't align with the kind of life I want to live. So how do you justify those two things? Because she said she found that stuff, but it was with men who were conservative. And it made her feel uneasy. She couldn't handle that. She couldn't handle the fact that they voted for Trump. The guy that's going to vote for Trump is more likely to shoot another guy that's going to and protect you and protect their family. Then call 911 and stuff like that and wait for the police to get there. Even if it takes three hours. I know. I already called. Right? <laughs> so. Yeah. Have men have to change certain standards? Compromise. Sure. I think so. I think men definitely have had to change. Yeah. Do think compromise yeah. is Part of it's economic, right? Like you just can't expect your wife to stay at home and, you know, not want to have a job or whatever. Part of it is probably values as well. I think a lot of men are pretty supportive of the fact that their wives or their partners like working, you know, more money, more trips, right? My girl out here is cherry picking. Um, 
I think men are probably, if I'm taking the views that people had before, like sexual purity, at least in the West, is not as coveted as it used to be. Still mm-hmm. hear some of it, but obviously mm-hmm. men have had to change on that front a lot. Yeah. Um, where else? Where else have men have had to change in regards to their dating standards? Well, we have to lower our expectance of if I give you something, you owe me something in return. What else? Something that's probably the prime thing. Oh, I don't have. Oh, I, I don't I have. You, I, don't I, have I, I don't have to drive you anywhere. I got you. Have, Wait, what does that mean? A driver's license. You can. You 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 can afford a car. So I got you. Go ahead. Um, they don't expect you to same have have the same wifely duties as you have to. Now that things have become more even and mm-hmm. money's being distributed differently because yeah. both people have a job, oh. the people who have to cook clean is going to look different in different relationships, right? Men have had to compromise in a lot of these realms and have accepted that role in a lot of ways. And so I think it's incumbent on a lot of ladies out there to also accept the fact that these things are changing and you just can't have everything that you want, right? Uh-uh. No, stop saying that. Abba, stop saying that. <laughs> Why do you keep saying that? You can have everything you want in relation to values and the kind of lifestyle that you want in relation to partnerships should you find the partner. But you might not meet that partner in this lifetime, which is not the same thing. Okay? Which is, again, why people are settling. Okay? Like, why does he keep saying you... Why does he keep saying that? Yeah. Yeah. I'd probably say that's safe. But do you hear guys complaining about stuff like that? Like, ooh. <laughs> mm. Actually, I'm going to be honest with you. I know some dudes. This is funny because I date girls sometimes. Like, I'll do the bare minimum and they'll be impressed. But it's like, they'll date men who expect the women to have a job and come home, quick, clean, and do everything. Yeah. So there's a lot of men, actually, who have completely forfeited their responsibilities, both financially and at home. So they. Thank you, Abba. You actually have the best of both worlds. They got a progressive woman who makes all the cheddar and she come home and she's still traditional. I was in a relationship like that where I was paying all the bills and I was doing everything and he would promise to cook and clean and do things and he just wouldn't do it. He was trying to go to school, failed it, trying to get a job, failed it. It was hard. It was hard being with somebody who didn't want to work towards the joy and happiness and sustainability of the relationship. He was incompatible with me. And it was my fault for trying to make it work. It was my fault for living for his potential. It was my fault for thinking that I couldn't find somebody more compatible with me, that we would grow into a more compatible couple. It was my fault for not breaking up sooner. It was my fault for holding on to something that was never going to be better than what it was. Right? And so I did. I broke up. I waited three plus years. Went on a bunch of single dates or first dates. And it wasn't until, what, last year that I ran into somebody who, without a doubt, is exactly what I would call perfect. And within the first conversation of talking to him, I was like, there's something weird about him. Now, I didn't think I was going to marry him. I didn't. I was like, oh, yeah, he's interesting. I kind of want to talk to him more. I didn't think anything of it. And then when we had our first date, by the time we had our first date, not even our first date. Because we talked for two weeks prior to that in DMs. Um, when we had our very first date, I was like, oh, God. I think this is it. I think I found this person. This wonderful person that I could be with. She's everything I've ever wanted. And that's why I made him my husband. <laughs> Does she guys handle all the responsibilities? Well, we had a couple of people like that. We covered them. We have covered some of them. We have covered some of them. They ain't got the finances to live that traditional masculine lifestyle, and they still expect them to do everything. So I guess this is probably the other side of that coin in a way. Uh, just the girl there, uh, just Lonely Thing was saying, yeah, you can't, get, you can't get separated over chores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What an image. It's that interesting. Is. I guess yeah, there's huh? just some people who... Uh, well, she doesn't have that. But she she thinks that's what out there, and that's she's, that's what she's preaching. That's not what she's getting. You don't get divorced over chores. You get divorced over neglect. It is neglectful to not participate in the home. It is neglectful to not participate in the growth of your relationship. You're not breaking up over dishes. You're breaking up over neglect. Anyways. That could never be me. But anyways, let us know what you guys think in the comments. Okay, pause. 
Okay. This is what we're going to watch next, but hold on, hold on. Okay. First of all, okay. Hold on. Great video by Abba and Preach. Like always, I will say, um, I will say that I think that everyone only has the tools that they have. And so you can only do what you can with the tools that you have. And just like a video game, the more tools, the more options. Just saying. Dun, dun, dun. 